All right, everybody, we are back today with chapter 41, report card time. All yays. All A's. Yay. Not a lot changed between Thanksgiving and Christmas break. In fact, if I tried to tell you too much about it, you just think the pages of this book had stuck together and you were reading the same chapters all over again. So here's the short version. Mother was a bottom-feeding scum of the earth, dipwad. Always. I had to keep some of my Zoom money to buy Christmas presents, so I only managed to get another 12 pages out of him. And as far as for school, and as for school, the last thing Miss Donatello said to me for before vacation was, "Keep trying, Rafe. I know you can do better, and I know you know it too." In other words, don't expect anything. Don't expect any good news on your report card. That's why I spent the first couple of afternoons on winter break outside in the cold, waiting for the mailman to come. Mom was always at work in the afternoon, and Bear never noticed anything unless it was on TV or had pepperoni on it. So I was all covered there. On the third day, we got an envelope with the HVMS return address in the corner and the smell of doom all over it. I stuck it inside my coat and dropped the rest of the mail inside and went straight to my room to check out the damage. Report card, HVMS. Name, Rafe K. Social studies, F. English, D. Science, D minus. Math, F. Spanish, F. Gym, D plus. Art, C. There was also a letter from mom signed by Mrs. Stryker. It said she was going to be in touch after vacation so they could schedule a conference to talk about Rafe's academic performance. Oh man, it was worse than I thought. Basically, I had two options. I could either get this over with fast and leave my report card on the counter where mom would see it, or I could buy some time. That way, at least mom would have a half-decent Christmas without having to worry about me for a while. She deserved it, and to tell you the truth... I felt like I did, too. My first idea was to just shove everything way under my mattress, but Leo never likes it when I do anything halfway. Why take chances, he said. There are a lot of better ways to make things disappear than that. He was right, of course, so I changed plans. I stuck it all back inside my coat, made a quick stop in the kitchen, and then picked up Ditka's leash from the hook by the back door. Ditka, here, boy. There are exactly two ways to make friends with Ditka. Food and walks. As soon as he saw that leash in my hand, he came running like a four-legged linebacker and pinned me to the door, slobbering all over the place. Where are you going, squirt? Bear asked from the couch. Just taking Ditka for a walk, I said, like it was something I did all the time. Sounds good, he said. He both could use the exercise. Look who's talking, I thought. See you later, I said, and we took off. Walking Ditka isn't really like walking at all. It's more like getting dragged behind the tank and trying to steer. Luckily, Dicka works on autopilot and went right over to this field where he likes to do his business. A bunch of condos were supposed to be built there, but the lot was mostly deserted in the meantime. At the back of the field, there's a drainage ditch with a stream running into a big pipe at the bottom. I tied Dicka's leash to a tree when we got there, and I went down by the water where nobody could see me. Next, I found some rocks and made a circle next to the water. Like a little campfire. Then I took out my report card the letter from Mrs. Stryker, the envelope, and a box of wooden kitchen matches from home. I'm not usually supposed to do anything with fire when mom's not around, but then again, I'm not usually supposed to incinerate my report card either. I crumpled it all up in the middle of the circle and lit it. Once it was done, just ashes, I kicked everything into the water and watched it wash down the drain pipe. Then I scuffed up the ground so there wouldn't be any footprints. Untied Ditka and let him drag me home the long way around the block, just in case anyone was watching. It was all kinds of overkill, but like Leo said, why take chances? And guess what? It worked. For a little while, anyways. Chapter 42. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas, baby. Chapter 43. Short and sweet, but mostly just short. Okay, that's not exactly what Christmas looked like, but to tell you the truth, it could have been a lot worse. No major disasters, anyway. The weirdest part was having Bear around on Christmas morning for the first time. Mom knew Georgia and I wouldn't want to buy presents for him, so she got some little stuff and put our names on the tags. For her sake, I didn't say anything about it. I just said, you're welcome, when he opened the NFL foam can holders I supposedly got for him, and said thank you when I opened the Chicago Bear sweatshirt he supposedly got for me. After that, Mom made a really good Christmas dinner, including two kinds of pie from the diner, apple and chocolate cream. I had first, seconds, and thirds of everything, and we all stayed up late watching Raiders of the Lost Ark on TV. Then, 
Christmas was over. And then mom found out about my, about my grades. And the hard stuff started all over again. Notice how fast this chapter went by? That's exactly how it felt to me. Mom calls that art imitating life. But I just call it my own rotten luck. Chapter 44. Lost and Found Mom was sitting at the computer when I came out to the kitchen that morning. As soon as I saw what she was doing, I knew I was toast. She was looking at the Hills Village Middle School website. And there were my grades. Right on the screen. Weren't we supposed to get these in the mail? Mom said. Uh, I, th I think so. I said, trying not to panic or sound like someone who had burned his own report card in a ditch somewhere. Bear was leaning against the counter with half a piece of leftover pie in one hand, a gallon of milk in the other, and Ditka licking crumbs off the floor around his feet. Nice grade, squirt, he said. These aren't too good, honey, Mom said. What happened? It was another one of those questions about without any good answers. I said the first thing I thought of. Maybe they're teaching the wrong subjects? It was probably true, but it wasn't going to get me out of this. Mom just looked at the screen again and sighed, like she was watching a sad movie. Well, in any case, she said, we can't let these slide. In other words, Bear butted in, your mother's been way too easy on you for too long. Those days are over. That's not what I meant, Mom said, but Bear kept yapping. So here's what's going to happen. Once you're back in school, you're going to come straight home every day. Then you're going to do your homework before anything else, and I'm going to check it to make sure that you do. What? I said. Afraid so, little man. Forget it, I said. You're not my teacher, and you're not my father, okay? This was way over the line, even for Bear. I looked at Mom to back me up, but I could tell right away she wasn't going to. I have to work in the afternoons, Rafe. I can't be here to do everything. I have to work... Oh. I think I just read that. <laughs> you could if you had a job, I said. Yo, I'm standing right here, Bear said. And believe it or not, I was in middle school once, too. Yeah, in the zoo... Watch your mouth, Squirt. That's another thing. I said, don't call me Squirt. Don't tell me what to do, Bear growled. Squirt. I felt like I wanted to explode, but Mom got there first. She threw her hands up in the air and yelled something that sounded like, Ah! Then she said, Can't you two ever have a normal conversation? Just once? Talk to him, Bear said. The kid's impossible. He took the last piece of pie out of the tray and shoved the whole thing into his mouth. Don't spoil your appetite. Mom got up and threw open the fridge. You know what? You two are just going to have to work this out, she said. Actually, scratch that. I don't care if you work it out or not. Rafe, this is the new arrangement. Carl will be checking your homework, and that's that. I expected her to say something else, like, and as for you, Carl, but she didn't. She just got out some eggs and started making breakfast like nothing had happened. Like she hadn't just turned me into bear food. And I thought, I gave up my mission for you. Mom had always been the one real person I felt like I could trust, even after Bear moved in with us. I figured she'd still be on my side when it really counted. Now, I didn't know what to think anymore. Except get me out of here. Chapter 45. First Day Back Blues The first day back at school started with a bang. Or, I guess with a shove... Miller literally nabbed me two seconds after I walked in the door. There were tons of people around, and I didn't even know he was there until I felt that familiar hand clapping onto the back of my neck. Guess what, Cachadorian? I actually read some of your stupid little notebook on vacation, he said right in my ear. All I can say is, wow, you're even more pathetic than I thought. Get off of me. I tried to pull away, but he just held on tighter. I could practically feel his greasy thumb poking into my brainstem. So here's the deal, Miller said. New year, new price. It's $1.50 a page from now on. And if you're lucky, I won't show your girlfriend Jingaletta how much you like to draw little pictures of her all the time. Got it? He didn't wait for an answer, though. He just pushed me straight down and hard enough for a full face plant in front of everyone. Watch your step, Picasso, he said. Gabe Wazinski gave him a high five for that one, and they both walked right over my stuff and up the hall. Ever since Miller had gotten my notebook and started taking my money, he wasn't so interested in actually killing me anymore. It was more like he was just testing me now to see how much I'd take. And I guess the answer was this much. I didn't stop to think. I didn't use my words. I just got up and ran straight at Miller. 
My feet left the floor. I landed on his back, and I held on with everything I had. Miller tried to reach for me, but then he changed his mind. He turned halfway around and said and jumped backwards, really hard into the wall. If it was a wrestling move, you'd call it the dead meat sandwich, and guess who was the meat? I'd lost my grip, along with all the air in my lungs, and hit the floor again without Miller ever putting a hand on me. A bunch of people gathered around. Some of them started yelling, fight, 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 and Mrs. Stryker was out of the front office like somebody had shot her out of a cannon. What is going on here, she yelled. Rafe jumped Miller, Gabe said. The problem was, it was true. There were about three dozen witnesses. Miller pushed me down. I said, you tripped, Miller said, and pointed at the mats by the front door. They're all old and warpy, and people trip on them all the time. Liar. Wimp. Both of you, Stryker said, laser tagging us with their eyes. Into the office, pronto. But I didn't do anything, Miller said, all wide-eyed and innocent. Seriously, they should record, recruit him for drama club. At least Stryker wasn't buying it. Mr. Miller, you're one of the two biggest troublemakers I've got, she told him. And then looked up right <laughs> and then looked right at me so we'd all know who the other one was. Let's go. March. I didn't have much choice. So I marched right out of Miller, the killer's hands, and into the sergeant strikers. Alright guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful and safe day, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye. Mwah.